Dramatic Irony Put simply, dramatic irony is a situation whereby the audience is aware of something that one or more of the characters on stage are not. Dramatic irony is used in all kinds of theatre from pantomime He's behind you! Oh no he isn't! Oh yes he is! Oh no he isn't! Oh yes he is! In this example, a type of dramatic irony is used to provide humour. Strictly speaking, it's not proper dramatic irony because everyone, audience and all actors, know the convention and will be in on the joke. Shakespeare used it as a dramatic device to make his plays more interesting and to establish genre. For example, in Romeo and Juliet, the audience know that Juliet isn't really dead when Romeo returns to Verona, but Romeo does not know this. In Othello, the audience know that Desdemona hasn't been unfaithful, whereas Othello himself does not. In both of the Shakespeare examples, dramatic irony is used to add tension and drama to the plot. It can also help the audience engage with and stay interested in the characters. For example, in the popular sitcom Friends, the viewers always know how the characters of Ross and Rachel feel about each other. They, on the other hand, don't always realise. The most obvious way that J.B. Priestley makes use of dramatic irony is to make the character of Burling look foolish and to add credibility to the inspector. During one of his speeches in Act 1, Burling says that There isn't a chance of war and also that the Titanic is absolutely unsinkable. As the play was set in 1912, but first performed in 1946, the audience would be very much aware that there had in fact just been two world wars, and the Titanic did in fact sink. They, the audience, are therefore made aware that Burling doesn't know what he is talking about, and he loses credibility. You'd think that everybody has to look after everybody else, community and all that nonsense. All cast doubt on his comments and opinions about society and community. The inspector, on the other hand, announces in his final speech that the Burlings will be taught in fire and blood and anguish, which suggests that he does indeed anticipate the war and strife that Burling doesn't foresee. In this way, Priestley establishes the inspector as someone who speaks the truth and as someone who should be listened to.